Hey everybody, good morning. Hope everything is okay with you. In the name of Allah, starting the lecture. Uh, we were talking about uh, RTL combinational components. And last time we talked more about multiplexers. Any questions? We could see the reflections, what did you write? So the first question saying that, what is wired OR? And how do you use it for cascading a smaller multiplexer to make bigger ones? Okay. So let's go somewhere here. Or even the first one. Who is the first one? Now most recent, no, older. Oldest, right? Okay. Abdul Malik. Abdul Malik here? Okay, you are? Yeah? Okay, very good. So you were the first. Wired OR is a logic design technique that combines multiple outputs using open collector or open drain. Actually, we haven't talked about open collector or open drain, but okay, to create a logical OR function. What we typed was a tri-state output. But how do you generate tri-state outputs? you using open collector, because we haven't talked about open collector or open drain in our course. But we've talked about tri-state logic. So uh, Abdul Malik is writing open, using open collector or open drain gates to create a logical OR function. You, 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 you see what I meant? Because we, we were talking about um, tri-state logic, and when something has high impedance, had, could have high impedance at the output, and then uh, so we could uh, use the to connect the wires together. We talked about that, but how do, you, how do we implement that? We will implement that using some kind of wired, uh, some kind of open collector, open drain, or the transistor that I showed you in the class. Anyhow, you, you looked it for it in the internet, and this would be a valid response. When cascading a smaller multiplexer to build larger ones, their select lines are connected together, their outputs, uh, here is important, are connected to a wired OR bus. We just connect the outputs together without using any kind of logic gate. We just connect them together. And this is not valid for regular output. When the output is either zero or one, it has a double uh, logic, not tri-state, then we cannot do that. But if it has a tri if it is tri state, then we can add, we can connect them, making sure that at one time all of them are inactive, just one of them is driving the, this point. This allows them. Good, Abdul Malik. So the next one was asking, I was asking for a function with three inputs. What multiplexer need to be used to design the function? We talked about this in the class. And then I am asking you for a function with five inputs. What multiplexers need to be used? OK. So Chloe. Oh, it is, it is most recent, huh? You didn't finish. OK, I, I, I would use all the thread first. So after Abdul Malik, which was first, now Fadi went out, yeah? Fadi went out. Dan. Dan is not here also. OK. So Feda, you know, no, you are, you are Fadi. Oh, sorry. I, 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 missed, I made mistake by Feda. Yeah, so Fadi, yes. Uh, yeah. Now Feda is not here, but Fadi here. Fadi, yes, please. Very good. You are the second one. So max based design. For a function with three inputs, a four to one multiplexer would be suitable because it has two select lines. A four to one multiplexer has four data inputs, two select lines. For a function with five inputs, a 32 to one. No, 32 to one, why? Because we would have, we need four select lines. 
So it would be 16 to 1. Not, yeah, because we, because our, our, our logic has five inputs. To make a logic with five inputs, we use a multiplexer with four select lines. Huh? Four? Oh, how many, how many inputs did it have? Let me see, what was the question? Five inputs. So if it is five inputs, we, we need four selectors. <coughs> four input, four, five inputs. If we have three inputs, we need two selectors. If we have four inputs, we need three selectors. If we have five inputs, we have four selectors. There, so uh, 16 to 1 would be a better answer has 32 inputs, f as, you m as you mentioned, it has five select lines, so it is too much. We need four. And one of the output of the max will represent the function output based on the selected input lines. By setting the select lines, okay, you, see, you, you, are, ri you are writing here correctly, but you put more inputs. By setting the select lines accordingly, we use select lines, four select lines, and for each select case, we use the real. We will we will uh, solve another example today. Okay, very good, Fadi. Perfect. So let's go to our max space design. Is there any questions? Four. Oh, okay. Perfect. No, we know how to do that. That's good. Yeah, good. Yes. No, uh, function inputs. Uh, the question you are asking, yeah? Here, when I, when I am saying inputs, it means the function. For example, I have a function. Let me bring it for you. you. Oh, where is that? Here, for example, here we have a function of three inputs, A, B, and C, I. Yeah. With these three inputs, what multiplexer do we use? We use a multiplexer with two select lines, because we have three inputs. And, and here, what we did, actually, we, we use a multiplexer with two select lines, A and B. So A and B, A and B goes for the select. Okay? Here, you see? A and B goes for the select, and now V, based on A and B, it has four possible combinations. Based on that, we select that. You see, let, let me do it again, and, and then I go for a four input uh, logic. So we have two inputs. We have A, B, and C, I. So A and B, I connect it to select. So this is A and B. When A and B are zero, zero, when A and B are zero, zero, it means that this, the, this zero input goes output. Oh, okay, when A and B are, are zero, zero, then output is zero when CI is zero, output is zero when CI is one. So the output is zero. So if I put zero here, so that's okay. When A and B are zero, the zero goes out for CO. Now, let's say A and B are 0, 1. When A and B are 0, 1, so let's make another color. So when A and B are 0, 1, then the second, the actually 1, the input 1 is selected. So when A and B is 0, 1, the output is 0. When CI is 0, the output is 1 when ci is 1. So what is the output? What is the output? The output is 0. When ci is 0, the output 
<coughs> is 1 when ci is 1 ci so i put ci here <coughs> when a and b when a and b are 1 0 then this line is selected when a and b are 1 0 the output is 0 when ci is 0 the output is 1 when ci is 1 so again it is the same as ci so i put ci here yeah so when 1 1 another color let's say black when a and b are 1 1 so we select this line this, this this line goes output so when it is 1 1 the output is 1 when ci is 0 the output is 1 when ci is 1 so it means that the output is 1 1 now we have built co co is this multiplexer when a b is 0 0 it is 0 when a b is 0 1 it is ci when a b is 1 0 it is ci when a b is 1 1 it is 1 okay the same thing for the for this function this function is s when a b is 0 0 the output is 0 when ci is 0 the output is 1 when ci is 1 so it is ci when a and b are 0 1 output is 1 when ci is 0 output is 0 when ci is 1 so it is complement yeah ci bar the third one here output is 1 when ci is 0 output is 0 when ci is 1 again not of ci and when they are 1 1 0 1 0 1 so the same as ci so you see ci ci bar ci bar ci okay now let's do the next example here we have a four input function a b c d therefore which multiplexer do we use three in three select lines so we use a multiplexer with three select lines and we put a and b and c here so it is good if I write A, B, A, A, this side, no, B, A, oh, no, C here, B here, A here, A, B, C, it's better, okay. So, look carefully, yes. Does the last example work with two cardinal mass separators? Yes, there are two outputs. One of them is for C, O, the other is for S. So there are two different output not yes yes because they are using the same a b here and and they are related as in terms of that one of them is c o is a carry out i told you it is a one bit adder a one bit adder has three inputs one digit one digit and carry from the previous st state so it has three inputs and it has two outputs each adder one is the sum two, two numbers are sum to get two bits are sum and one carry going to the next uh, digit yes if the number yes of course because because then we can we can build a, a very simple circuit if if for example let's let me go here if here you are going to use a two input select two select lines then when a and b both of them are zero then you have something like this then you don't know what to connect there you have to to build a logic for example c or d for example but it is hard but when you put three select lines then you have only this you have only for example this 
And this is very simple. It is two, uh, two, 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 two possible uh, combinations, two possible outputs. Either it is one, either it is zero, either, either it is the input itself or the complement of the input. One of these four uh, possible uh, states. So now let's work on this one. A, B, C, if A, B, C are 0, 0, 0. When A, B, C are 0, 0, 0, we are here. A, B, C, A, B, C are 0, 0, 0. So we are here. C, 0, 0, 0, 1, here. A, B, C are 0, 0, 0. And as you could see, the output is 1. Either D is 0. Oh, sorry. What did I write? Uh, A and B. Sorry. A and B are 0, 0. C is also 0. So it is this. Sorry. It is this. A, B, 0, 0. C, 0. So the output is 1. Either D is 0 or 1. So the first one is 1. OK? Now let's go to the next combination, dark red. A, B, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. I don't know why it's right like that. 0, 0, 1. A, B is 0, 1, and C is 0. So it is this one. 0, 0, 1. C, B, A. It should be like that, not A, B. C, B, A. A, B. Yes, CBA. So again, you see the output is 1 if D is 0. The output is 0 if D is 1. So what is that? It is the complement of D. It is the complement of D. OK. So when we have 0, 1, 0, so 0, 1, 0. So 0, 1, 0. This is the one. 0, 1, 0. This is the one. 0, 1, 0. C is 0. A is 1. B is 0. 0, 1, 0. So when we have 0, 1, 0, the output is 1 when D is 0. The output is 0 when D is 1. So what is that? Complement of D. Again, the same thing. When we have 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 1 means here. Color. 0, 1, 1 means here. A and B are 1. C is 0. So the output is 0. When D is 0, the output is 1 if D is 1. So it is D. It is D. OK. Now, 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0. Uh, you might not see yellow, so I select light green. 1, 0, 0 is this one. <coughs> C is 1, A and B are 0. The output is 0. 0. So, zero. OK. The next one is 1, 0, 1. 1, 0, 1. 1, 0, 1 is here. The output is 0 when D is 1. The output is 1 when D is 0. D bar, D bar. And the next one is 1. Uh, please be careful. The next one is this. Do you remember in the Carnot map? 0, 1, 2, 3. So here we are. It is uh, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. As you could see, the output is always 1. So it is 1. So it is 1. And the last one, 1, 1, 1, the last one, 1, 1, 1, the output is 1 when D is 1. The output is 0 when D is 0. So it is exactly like D. Yeah, we did it. So we made the design, mark space design. We didn't think of any kind of logic. We just, we were just thinking only for the two outputs and the two outputs have one of the four combinations either it is zero either it is one 
either it is D, either it is D bar. And that's based on that, we selected the inputs. We put the inputs at that, and that's it. It's very easy. We don't need any simplification, corner map, mark term, mean terms, and so on. Yes? Okay, for example, this. Uh, let me put another one which would be more difficult. For example, this. This is number two. Mm. Number two means zero, one, zero. Zero, one, zero. So it means that C is zero, A uh, is one, B is zero. Okay? So look at the corner, corner map. When A, B is one, zero, when A, B is one, zero, is this, one, zero. And when C is zero, when C is zero, is this, is, is this two row. So this would be zero, one, zero. And when you look at zero, one, zero, it has two, two, two outputs, either one or zero. It is one when D is zero. It is zero when D is one. So it is a D bar, the nut of bar D. It is one when D is zero. It is zero when D is one. So it is D bar. So we put D bar here. No, yeah, it's up to you. I, I, I have CAB. You, you, you might put something else for your Carnot map. But my Carnot map is A, B, C, D. A, B is here. A, B, C, D. So A is the most significant bit. No, sorry. Uh, D is the most significant bit. Then C, then B, then A. It's usually, it is like what we, before we were doing the Carnot map, A, B, C, D. We put A, B, C, D like that. You could do it some, something else, and then you have to, uh, to be careful about the select lines, which is A, B, C, D. Okay? Yeah? So it was must base design. Okay, do you want to, uh, to, 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 more to, to, to uh, explain more? You, you should maybe some kind of practice. You see here, let me show you. Do you remember true stable? A, B, C, D, A, zero, 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 one. Okay, so A, B, C, D. So it was zero 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 one zero zero one zero 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 one one. Yes, we have sixteen combinations. True table, and A was the most one, and B D was the the least one. So for this, we use this Carnot map, and this would be number one. Number you remember one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. These are the num the mean term numbers. Uh, seven, eight, nine. No, zero. For why one? Starting from zero. So it is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, and then uh, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay? So 15 is 1, 1, 1, 1. A, B, C, D are 1, 1, 1, 1. For example, 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1. 0, 1, 0, 1. Remember, I guess you need to go back a little in, in for Carnot map. Okay, next combinational component. So we have talked about decoder and then multiplexer. Now another component which it is parity. You know parity? Have you heard? No? Okay. So parity is a mechanism for detecting errors. 
we have bits. Let's say we have eight bit number. One one zero zero one 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 zero one zero zero one zero. For example, this is our number, eight bit. We are transmitting it to another place. Let's we have in internet the byte is coming from internet, coming from some place to here. From, for example, there is a Wi-Fi here. I am uh, uh, using Wi-Fi connection and getting the bytes. When I am transmitting this, there might be noise. Since there might be noise, there might be errors. I transmit this, but I receive something else. Let's say I receive this. One 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 zero zero one zero. So we have one error in the number. I received this. So in transmission and in a storage also, you store it somewhere in the hard disk, in memory, in somewhere, and it is there is error. It, uh, for example, there is a short circuit of a memory, and they cannot store the right uh, number there. Yeah, it f yeah flip yeah, uh, uh, maybe electricity something like that. So something happens. So we need some kind of mechanism to detect errors. It should it it might happen. So we have to detect it. And of course there are mechanisms. For example, in Wi-Fi communication, there is a complicated mechanism which I am not talking about that right now. Now I am talking about a very simple mechanism called parity. Parity is that you put, you add an extra bit, so a redundant information is added, so it could help you to detect the errors. So how could we do that? When we use odd parity, we try to make the output is one if there are odd numbers of inputs are one. When we put even parity, we make the parity as one if there are even numbers of one. So what does it mean? Let me s uh, say that uh, now I am using an even parity mechanism. So in even parity mechanism, my input is this, 11010010. One, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero. How many ones are there? One, two, three, four. So it is even number of ones. So my even parity will become one, because it has one uh, even number of ones. So it becomes one. And now I add this number, this bit, which is one now. I add it to my number. So my number from 8 bit becomes 9 bits. And I've added 1 to it. So this is my number. And then I transmit it. And let's say in the transmission, there is one error as I put before. So there is one error here. 0 changed to 1 with error, with noise, something happened, so not. So the, not, the bits that I receive is this one, okay? So I receive one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one. Now, in the receiver part, I know that I was using even parity and added even parity to it. So my, the number of ones in my receiving uh, number should be odd because the number of ones were, were even, and I added another one to that. So the number of ones to the original number is odd. Now I look at this. Yes. So does this way of checking errors fail in addition to the flips that you were sending? No, we cannot. So parity doesn't work with the two flips. It only works, it only detects with one error. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's the. We cannot detect it. You see, now how do I detect? Now I look at this and see, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six ones is here, which is not correct. 
it should have odd number of ones. Now I understand that something wrong happened. Something is wrong here. So I understand that this is error. So somehow, for example, if it is a communication, I send a message back to the sender. I didn't receive the number correctly. Please send it again, for example. Again, I tell you, in the real Wi-Fi communication, for example, IEEE 8.2 protocol, the error detection is much more complicated. It is not just one parity bit. With one parity bit, we, cannot, we can only detect one error. If there is two errors, as David mentioned, for example, let's say this is also zero, became one here. If this also happened, then we cannot detect it because we count the number of ones and it is odd. So we say, okay, it is okay. And there is no par parity error. So that's it. There are different mechanisms for that, which uh, it's more complicated. You could learn it in communication course when you are talking about, for example, IEEE 8.21 protocol. Uh, so only one error is detected. We added a bit to that, so we used it. And also, the parity only detects, only detects there is an error, but it doesn't tell me, okay, where is the error? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? It doesn't tell me anything about the location of, and I cannot use it to fix the error. So it is only as mechanism for error detection when the error is only one bit. That's it. So it is the limitation. But it's good as for some cases that you know that there are not much of much noise here. So only maybe there is one error, so you can use the parity. For example, in uh, motherboards, in computers, in desktop computers, laptop computers, they use parity for RAMs. When, when, when you uh, store something in the RAM, in the memory, then you add one bit to that and uh, store one bit more with a parity. And then when somebody is loading from memory, is reading memory, it checks the parity. If it is okay, so everything is good. If it is not okay, it is very bad. A message comes to your monitor, parity error, turn off your computer, go and check your memory. Because when there is problem with memory, that, that we cannot do anything. So it's, we should turn off the computer and go and fix it. So that's it. So uh, the, the, for parity, detecting parity, it's very simple because it is the number of ones. So the best circuit is, what do we use for counting the number of ones? XOR is the best. XOR is the two input of XOR is one, then the output is zero. If both of them are zero, the output is zero. When one of them is one, the other is zero, the output is one. So with XOR, we can use very simple out, out uh, parity. So two bits go to one XOR, the other two bits go go to another XOR, the result again coming to another XOR, and we get the parity out, okay? So very simple circuit. And this is another component that you put you in your bag. So in your design, in your RTL design, when you need a parity generator, you can use this circuit. We can even make it cascadable. So you see it is very regular. So if you put it like this, it is very cascadable. When you have two input parity generator, this is. When you have three inputs, so you get output from one, XOR with the input. So it is three input now. So if you get output from the three input and XOR with the fourth input, then you have four input parity generator. So it is very easily cascadable. Uh, again, what we have talked before about cascading, but it adding the delays. So when you are putting cascading, here we have only one level delay, here we have two level delay, here we have three. So this 
signals are generated with three level delays now and cascading making more and more delays we have talked about this so this is some kind of one bit signature only one bit a signature of one bit we have added to the data and it can only detect the error not fixing the error so redundant information is added to help us find to help us detect the error not find the error and cascading could be done easily the next uh, component that we are going to see is comparator uh, comparator with comparator so it, it we had something like that in the exam in the midterm exam also we had some kind of comparator that you needed to design so a comparator is comparing two numbers we start with equality uh, comparator if the two numbers are equal or not again what would be the best circuit for X or again because if they are the same the output is zero if they are not the same the output is one X or is a very good uh, circuit for detecting comparator for detecting equality yeah. so we have four uh, we have two four bit numbers a and B we want to see if they are equal or not we compare corresponding bits with each other a0 with b0 a1 with b1 a2 with b2 and a3 with b3 so corresponding bits goes here a0 b0 a1 b1 a2 b2 and a3 b3 they are going to xor so if all of them xnor we use xnor because if they are equal then the output is 1 if they are not equal the output is 0 x or is the uh, inverse of that we use x nor so if all of them please pay attention if all of them is 1 they are equal if only one of the bits are not equal then it means they are not equal so it, 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 for example this is one this is one but this is zero so they are not equal bit two are is different so they are not equal so we add them all together if all of them are one the result is one it means that they are equal if one of them is zero then it is not equal we can make cascade again I repeat in any component design that we uh, built we try to make it cascadable so you could make something bigger using this one to make this cascadable I used something like what, uh, what I used in a decoder with a repeatable part you see this is one comparator one bit comparator if I get the output of this comparator and then and it with the another comparator then I cascade it so this is repeatable this is the iterative element so if I use another one of that exactly like that you see this is a XNOR with an AND so if I use another one and I connect I connect uh, this this to this then I build a cascadable company again the next one this one goes to the NAND part and the output of the X nor goes here this one. so this is cascadable also cascadable we use this as much as we want if we want to have 16 bit comparator we can use that but again in any cascading design we are adding delays because the delay from here comes accumulated here 
So now the, all of the delays coming and added here and added here. So the delays are added in each stage. So we have built a qual equality comparator, if they are equal or not. What about greater than? A greater than. The greater than is very simple. A, B, A, B, let's say A, I, B, I, is two corresponding bits of A and B. So if both of them are zero, so it is not greater than. So if, let's say we are calculating A, I is greater than B, I or not. If A, I is zero, B, I is zero, so it is not greater than. If A, I is one and B is zero, then it is greater than. If A and E, and it is not greater than if they are both A I B I zero 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 one one zero one one. Only in this case, A I is greater than B I. Yes, very simple. Just one min term. So the output is what? The output is A I B I not A I B I not. So greater than is A I. B I not, very simple. So we have built greater than. And previously, we have built equal. So we, if we look at these two, if either a greater than or equal, then we have a greater than or equal circuit. Let's see. One slice. So I am showing you one slice, which comparing one bit. And then if the number is, let's say, 16 bits. We have 16 a slice of this, and then we have to calculate. Let's, let's, let me show you. Uh, starting from left, you, you have two numbers. Let's, make, let's say you have two four-bit numbers, 1, 0, 1, 1, and the other number is uh, 1, uh, 0, 0, 0. We want to compare these two numbers to see if, they are, if the first one is greater than the second one or not, A and B. How do you do that? It is an uh, elementary school problem. When you give the students, uh, maybe grade three student, maybe less. For example, this number, 993 and uh, 985 and you ask him or her which one is greater how do we do that exactly perfect so we start from left first digit they are similar so let's go to the next digit the next digit this is greater than this so the number is greater we don't look at the rest of the number, whatever it is. We don't do it. So we start from the left, compare. If they are equal, then we go to the next. If it is greater, then it means that the number is greater. If it is less, then it means that it is less. We cannot, we don't go to the rest of the numbers. Exactly the same for the binary. For the binary, we, we do the same thing. So we start from the left. We compare these two. They are the same. So we go to the next bit. They are the same. So we go to the next bit. And the next bit, this is one, the other one is zero. So it means that this number is greater than this number. And we don't look the rest, so whatever it is. If we reach at the last bits and uh, still they are all the same it means that they are equal if during one of the comparators one of the bits one of them is greater then it means that the number is greater if it is less it means that the number is less so it's very easy so you see this uh, this this is the equal circuit that we have sh I have shown you before this is the same thing so coming here and this is equal from the previous number stage and they are ended together. Okay. 
And what was the greater uh, circuit? It was just a min term. A, what was that? A, A, I, B, I naught. So this is A, I, B, I naught. Okay? So this is the greater than here. So this, this shows if A, I is greater than this or not. So if, if A, I and B, I are equal, if AI and BI are equal, we cannot decide. We should go to the next digit. If AI is greater than BI, when we are starting from the left, then it means that A is greater than B. If AI is less than BI, then it means A is less than BI. So how do we do that? And this circuit exactly doing this, the, the thing that I just spoke. You see, let's say this is the first stage, the most significant bit, the most left. So if it is the most left, the equal, we put one because it is starting and we put greater zero. Okay. AI and BI. Let's say AI and BI are equal. If they are equal, then here we have 1, and we have 1 here, so the equal gets 1, and so it is equal. And also we know that for sure the greater is 0, because this is 1, uh, this is AI, BI, they are not, uh, AI is not greater, so this is 0, so 0 and with something is 0, and here we have 0, here we have 0, so we have 0 here, so it's good. AI and BI, they were equal, so this is the result. Now let's go to the next bit. For if we go to the next bit, this equal comes here, and this greater comes here with the same circuit. Okay, now let me erase that and assume that we are at the next bit here. I put red. So we have one coming from the previous bit and zero coming from the previous bit. And now let's assume AI is greater than BI. For example, that was the, the third bit. Now we are at the second bit. And AI, A2 is greater than B2. If AI, A2 is greater than B2, then they are not equal. So the, the result of this is zero and zero and something, it becomes zero. And since AI is greater than BI, the result of this greater than is one, and this one is here, equal from the previous stage is one, so this is one, and the greater than is that this OR file would become one. Good. So we, can, we, we, we get one at the greater one and zero at the equal. And we don't need to go to the rest of the bits. A1 and B1, A0 and B0, it's the, even if you put it there, even let's say we are now going to A1 and B1 and with this. So now we are at the third from the left. First one, second one, third one. And now we got greater than 1 here from the previous stage and equal 0 from the previous stage. So A1 and B1, whatever they are, see, whatever they are, whatever they are, either here they are equal or not, either it becomes 1 or 0, then we have 0 here, so this becomes 0. And whatever they are, so the, the output of the greater is either because it either becomes zero or one. So this zero or one, they come some here, they got some output here, but one is here and one goes to OR gate, so the output is one. So whatever A1 and B1 be, 
either zero or one, either greater, either equal, either less, the output is greater because the previous bit was greater and it should go to the less. Okay, so we have built a greater and equal comparator. So it will show us if it is greater or not, if it is equal or not, and that's so we built it. If we want to find the less than, so it is the, the, the uh, uh, invert of greater than. Again, here we have accumulating delay. Here we have, for example, one level. Here we have two levels of delay, and then they go to the next level, and they are accumulating. So here is the whole circuit that I've explained for you. I put four of them for a four-bit number, and I connect equal of this to this, equal of this to this one, equal of this to this, and greater greater of here to uh, greater to here, greater to here, and this greater goes here. This is the thing that we, we built. This is a four bit equal or greater comparator. And, and a starting from the first stage, a starting with one for equal, and zero for greater. Don't forget to put something there because it should have something. Now it works. Now it works. Whenever you compare two bit, two four bit numbers, uh, starting from A3 and B3, if it is greater, then this becomes one and it goes all the way to down. So every, the greater, it would become one here, here. When one of them, becomes one, then this becomes one. If equal is one, then it goes for the next one. And we compare that. Again, if this is equal, again going to the next bit, and we make the same. So if all of four are equal, then this becomes one. And if equal is zero, greater is zero, both of them are zero, it means that it is less. A is less than B. Good? So this is another component that we have built. This is the connection that we made, equals to each other and greater to each other. Now we can make it better, a better package for cascading. I built a four-bit comparator for you. Now I am using this for making, for example, 16-bit comparators. When I am using 6-bit comparators, then uh, then I am uh, starting from the most significant part and then going left. But I need some inputs from the previous one. This is the one. If A is greater than B, so for sure, I mean this part, the most significant part. L let me put. I have four four bits number now. I want to make a 16-bit comparator. If this four bit is greater, A A of this four bit is greater, then for sure, the whole thing is greater and gt is become is one and equal and less are zero if this part is less than a of that part a uh, 15 to a a 50, 15 14 13 12 a 15 to a 12 is less than b 15 to b 12 then for sure a is less than B, okay? But if A and B are equal for that part, then we have to go to this part again. Now, we have to see how is this. If it is equal, uh, if 
okay, we have to go to the next one. And the next one is either lit uh, less than, equal than, or greater than. If it is less than the, the previous one, it is L, so this is also less than. LT is L. If the previous one is greater than G, so this is also greater than. So if the previous one, G is 1, L is 0, then here also GT is 1, L, LT is 0. But if both of them are uh, 0 and equal is 1, equal, we get equal from the previous one, we cannot decide. We say that it is the same as equal. So we have to go to move to the next one. Go one by one down up to the class. If we, f if we reach the last one and still all of them, they are the same, the equal, then the, it is equal. If not, it is either less than or greater than. So here you see, this is the compressor and we connect them like this. Here is the connection. You see, connecting from the least significant part, this LT goes to L here. This equal goes to E here. This GT goes to G here. And for this, we look at these inputs when they are equal. If, if for this, LT is 1, that's it. Then LT is 1. We don't need to look at the previous one. Uh, starting from here, when LT is 1, so that's it. LT is 1, EQ is 0, GT is 0. We don't need to look at this. But if LT is not 1, GT is not 1, only equal is 1. So if equal is 1, GLT is 0, GT is 0, then we have to look at the previous one. How is the previous one? What, what about L and E and G from the previous stage? If L or G from the previous stage is 1, then it becomes 1 here. But if again here we have 0 and 0 from the previous stage and equal is 1, then we have to go here. And this one is detecting the opening. Okay? Got it? So again, I am saying, starting from the most significant part, which is A12, A, A15 to A12, we compare them. If they are a greater or less than, that's it. So the whole number is greater or less. If they are equal, then we have to look at the result of this comparator and so on. Okay? Any questions? Where is the mouse? Okay. Okay, before going to the application, let's do the quiz now and then continuing our lecture. Okay, now that we talked about uh, comparator, one application of comparator would be using it for detecting, finding the maximum, yeah? So when you want to find the maximum of two inputs, how do you do that? You compare them. If A is greater than B, then A is the maximum. If B is greater than A, B is the maximum. If they are equal, either one could be maximum. It doesn't matter. So let me write it for you. If A, uh, why don't you, I cannot write it. If A greater than B, then maximum is A. If B greater than A, then maximum would be B. If they are equal, then either of them could be maximum. Okay, so we will, we will use our comparator and use it for that. So how do we use that? Whenever you have an if, what do you use? The best circuit for if, what is it? 
multiplexer. You are the best component. If so, we use a multiplexer here, and we s we put the select for with the conditions that we want. For example, let me say that this circuit is finding is comparing B to one. So if B greater than A, GT is one, LT is zero, EQ is zero. When when B is less than A, B is less than A, so LT is one, GT is zero, equal is zero, and when B is equal to one, then equal is one, B GT is zero, and GT is zero. Okay. So if this is the case, then how do I connect them? Yeah, I connect B to here. So when we want the maximum to become B, it should be one. So I connect greater, yeah. You see, when B is greater than A, GT is one. So this one coming to multiplexer, and this select the one, the line one, so B goes out, B goes out. When, let me put the right color. I guess I did it right. So the right color, when 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 B is greater than A is green. So green. So let me green. So when is so when B, B is greater than A, G T is one, and we connected G T here, so it selects line one and B goes out. When, uh, when uh, B is less than A, red, red color. When B, B is less than A, so GT is zero. GT is zero, so the zero line selected, A going out. And when they are equal, which is the orange, color when they are equal uh, still gt is zero so gt is zero when it is zero the, the zero line is selected again a goes out so with this circuit if a is greater or equal than b then maximum a and b would be a if a is less than B, then B is the maximum. Actually, when they are equal, A and B, they are equal. So it doesn't matter if say maximum is A or B. But here in this circuit, we are putting A as the output. Okay? Very simple application. Maximum finder. Now, what if we have signed numbers? sign numbers. Does our comparator work? Let's make a competition. Let's make a competition. Write it in the comp. The first two people write in the competition. They are okay. So let me go to discussion. Uh, competition. Competition, no, I have to. Uh, competition, new, how do I put a new topic? Every time I forget, I go here, create, oh, I start a new thread, okay. So the question is comparator, comparator for sign numbers. Does it work? Please respond. The first two complete answer. Please make complete answer. 
Okay. The best way to find out is that you write two numbers for yourself, two sign numbers, and then you use the circuit to see if it works or not. Very fast. Two example numbers, sign numbers, and then compare them. It is 12.43. I give you two minutes. No, yes is not enough, Rida. Rida, make something more. Eric, Eric, Eric has something. He wrote something. Make a complete answer. When it is zero or when when it is when it doesn't work, give us an example. I guess you gave us an example. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's good. Maybe we have one correct answer yet. So we need another one. Rida, put more. How did you write yes? Just by guess or you thought about it? Write it. Right, Ruth? Yes. Very good. Chiloe, Samuel, okay. Chiloe and Samuel are also have written. So I hope we have two correct answers here. So Rida is not good. Yes, okay. I don't know what does it mean. Eric, no. Since the first bit will be one if negative and zero if positive, so when comparing, negative and positives, you will not get the right answer. Very good. Very good example. But it is not complete. I, I accept it. It is good. Do you see, Eric is saying that 1001 in a sign representation is negative. And 010110 zero, zero, is positive. But our compressor compares bit by bit. So it compares 1 to 0, and it's for, for the comparator, uh, it's for, for it, 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 it takes it greater, which is not. It is negative number, so it is not. So Eric is right. It is not working for this. But let me see if you have written more. Chloe. It doesn't work because in sign numbers, if the most, uh, so again, Chiloe is, is the same as Eric. The number is negative and zero, so the circuit will take the most. Signal. So we have two correct. If Samuel has written something that I want, then I accept that also. Since computer work is in the sign number, non negative numbers. Oh no, so you didn't also write what I was expecting. Let me refresh. If it is not there, then I will tell you what I meant. Okay. Zhi Cheng, no, okay, no, okay, everybody no. But what I was expecting from you is that a yes, when both of them are negative or both of them are positive. It is very strange. If both of them are negative, it works. It works. It's starting from the most significant. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. For example, minus 5, minus 6. Minus 5. What is minus 5? 5 is 0. This is 5. So minus 5 is 1, 1, 0, 1. This is minus 1, minus 5. And minus 6 is 6. 6 is 4 and 2. So minus 6 is 0, 1. 0, 1. This is minus 6. So if you compare minus 6 to minus 5, which one is greater? So starting from the left 
most significant bit. One and one are equal. Zero and zero are equal. Oh, it's, it's, it's strange. One and one are equal. And this is one and this is zero. So this is greater. So it works. You see, if both of the numbers are positive or both of them are neg negative, it works. It works as it is. But if one of them is negative and the other is positive, it doesn't work. So you can fix it very easily. So you can get the sine bit of two, two, two. If they are not equal using x or, you can find if that. And if it is one, then you x or the result. The result. The greater than becomes less than. The less than becomes greater than. OK, thank you very much. Uh, so the next the next component would be other which is the last component and then we go to the sequential components which would be the, our last uh, topic thank you very much have a good weekend